Canva websites are an incredible tool, especially for anyone who wants to make something beautiful and with no coding required and totally for free. That's right, they're free. There is no expense of paying for a domain or paying for a service like Squarespace or WordPress or Wix to host your website. As a result, I've been singing the praises of Canva websites for nearly a year and teaching techniques to direct sellers to use the websites to up their game, especially with their online parties using my on-demand method. But I do see some problems coming up and a few issues about key things. And so in this video, I wanna tackle some of those. I go into more depth in my course, but let's give a rundown of six common mistakes in Canva websites and how to fix them. This will help you to create with confidence and save a lot of time and headache. In fact, these are things that I wish someone had told me when I was starting out with Canva sites, but I was not able to find advice anywhere on the internet about these issues. And so I'm bringing them to you right now. This is gonna be part one of a two video series covering my top six most common errors that I see on Canva websites. So we're gonna count down number six, five, and four right now, and let's get started. Number six on my list is, I see people putting too much uploaded video directly on their site. With a Canva website, you have a couple of options for how to include video. You can either upload a video to Canva and have that in there, or you can embed a video that is from YouTube or Vimeo. Now there are some major advantages to using uploaded video rather than embedded. I do love the look of having a video uploaded directly inside, especially because you can crop it or even put it in a frame to control the shape. You can have vertical video, which is not an option if something is embedded on YouTube or Vimeo, where it's just gonna be the one horizontal shape. And an uploaded video doesn't include YouTube's branding, and that means it has just a cleaner look. It integrates more nicely with your aesthetic. It also is not gonna give suggested videos at the end, which could send your viewer off and into distraction instead of keeping them focused on your content. And of course, if you just upload a video, you don't have to bother putting it onto a YouTube channel to get it into your design. So those are the pros of uploaded. There are a lot of pros to doing it this way. However, I've noticed that if you have too many uploaded videos, they can slow down your website. Even if Canva let you upload it and let you put them all on your site, if it slows it down, it's not gonna make a great experience for the user. Embedded videos, therefore, can give a better experience to the user. They won't slow down your site, plus the viewer can make use of YouTube's controls to access closed captioning or even go full screen if they wish, and that's a plus. You don't have that built-in accessibility with uploaded videos unless you build in the closed caption and make sure that their size is pretty big. So my advice is there's no one right answer. Just weigh these pros and cons, think it through, and if you're starting to add a lot of uploaded video to your site, just test it out. Maybe have a friend or two test it out on their own phone or their own device. And make sure that you're not overloading your site. Okay, number five on our list is not paying attention to screen shape and what the audience needs. And like most websites, Canva sites do not adapt their shape to the viewer's screen. And so you kind of have to know on the front end if you want to have it be a vertical site intended for mobile or a horizontal site intended for a computer. This is not a deal breaker at all. After all, most of your audience is probably viewing on mobile. I know mine is. And if you create your website for mobile, then people in a computer browser they'll be able to still see it just fine. However, since it's not optimized for them, you're gonna end up with a lot of wasted space. They're gonna see your content in a strip down the center and you're wasting all this beautiful space on the sides where you could be sizing up your content. So if you wanna make sure you're optimized for both groups, then I suggest creating two versions of your site. Create kind of the primary one first, get it just the way you like it, and then resize it. You can check out my video about how to resize quickly. Resize it into the other shape. Then you can just offer a little button on the first page of each design to point the user to toggle between them. So if they are opening up the mobile design but they're on a computer, they can just click and that will open up 
the computer optimized version of your site. So all that to say, just make sure that you preview what your site is going to look like on different screens so that you can consider between how it looks and what you know about your audience, consider whether you might want to have two versions of your design. Okay, number four is using a bad link shortening tool. Here's the thing, your Canva website is not on your own URL, it's not on your own domain. It lives on canva.com and it's basically a way for someone else to view your design and interact with it using that URL. And that URL is really super duper long and ugly. Now, my students are oftentimes using this link to text out. And so it's going to end up taking up half the text with a bunch of ugly characters. And they like to use a link shortener instead. So I have recommended using Bitly as a link shortener. And of course, if you do have your own domain, you can create a redirect from your own domain. So that will shorten it as well. So what's the problem? Shortening is great. It makes your website easier on the eyes. However, one of my students learned something the hard way and it took a lot of digging for me to figure out what was going on. So here's my PSA. Do not use tiny URL as your link shortener. It turns out tiny URL likes to get its tiny little fingers on some affiliate income anytime someone is being redirected to a site that has an affiliate program. Now it just so happens Canva has an affiliate program. Speaking of which, if you love this content and you want to try Canva and Canva Pro for free, you can use my affiliate link. See, that's the appropriate use of an affiliate link. However, TinyURL assumes that just because someone's going to a canva.com site that, oh, they must be going there to create something in Canva. So I'm going to invite them to join Canva. However, the person is trying to just view the site. The person might not even know Canva is a thing. And then TinyURL redirects them to join Canva so that it can get some affiliate income. Yuck. I hate this so, so much. It's going to confuse the viewer and they're going to think that they have to join something just to be able to view your website. So I have not experienced this issue at all with Bitly and I haven't experimented with other link shorteners. So if you're using any link shortener, just make sure you're testing it. Make sure you have other people test it so that nothing funky is going to happen behind the scenes. Now, as I said, this is part one of two videos. So I have more coming at you next week. We're going to cover some issues you might run into around sharing your site, display problems and linking errors. So make sure to subscribe and I will see you in that video next time.